All right, hello everyone. So today we have the Priest of La Mancha Land, Gregor's Kit. Uh, Gregor is designed quite similarly to Quiquack Heathcliff, where he actually gains a lot of bonuses the lower HP he is. And this character here actually gains a very interesting stat here, which is he gains heal by stack times 5% of damage dealt on hit as HP. So you are healing per hit with this character and it's through this status called the Ailing Heart. The Ailing Heart is a status which is interesting as well because on turn end, you actually gain stacks of this status here. So you are slowly ailing your heart and you're gaining defense level up for every X stack. Another scaling here if you're low HP and then you get the heal if you're really low on HP over here. Bloodied Hand is going to be the quite similar to the actual boss's uh, Bloodied Hand, except that you will not have Rupture Count or Bleak Count, so that's going to be quite shit. If you had Bleak Count or Rupture Count here, this character would actually be the savior, but unfortunately it's Potency, which means that this character is meant to be the Potency part of the puzzle for Rupture and Bleed, since he applies literally both of them. I'm wondering how much stacks of the blood feast you need to drink in order to get to this stage over here because this part here is really really important to help you to um, really get your potency application going i'm guessing if he has this he might be able to power creep the potency of someone like seven heath cliff who has been a core unit for rupture potency application for quite a while already so let's just wait and see but for this gregor here if you notice the theme of this character, skill 1, bleed rupture, skill 2, bleed calm, rupture, skill 3, bloodied hand, bleed calm, rupture count, bleed potency, rupture potency. You see way more potency than you see the count. And so this character here is really just a potency applier character who also wants to get hit a lot and will just lose HP but then once he gets to a certain percentage HP he will be able to actually uh, become really tanky and he will be able to also get more benefits because his skill tree actually scales based off his missing HP and also scales off his um, healing hearts in some way. Right. Uh, the skill 2, sorry, is the one that scales off the ailing heart. If you are very high in your ailing heart, you will consume blood feast and then you gain bloody hand. But if you are at less than X ailing heart, then you gain bleed and bloody hand over here. Your guard skill also gives you ailing heart and your guard skill is quite interesting because your guard skill actually will give you bleed and pop your bleed up to Y times on yourself, which will nuke the bleed count as well. So with one guard skill, you actually just nuke all the bleed count that's been applied on yourself. If like, let's say uh, a blood feed actually hit you, then you apply plus four bleed count or plus five bleed count, well, you get to nuke yourselves and you lose a certain amount of stacks. So you don't let them scale the bleed that much, which is very, very cool. And if you are less than X percent HP, you also consume blood feeds to heal the same value as HP. So that is really, really cool. This defense skill gives you additional healing also helps you to nuke your HP. So it's a two-in-one guard skill. Very, very nice. The skill one is just a very simple skill to understand. You gain bleed on every single skill, by the way. But you also gain coin power for every X bleed on the target on every single skill also. But this skill one, he has the special line of if you're very healthy, gain additional bleed. So use skill one to just bleed yourself with a huge amount of potency. This character has no bleed count on himself. So he's only able to gain uh, bleed potency on himself. And then after he bleed himself here, if he wants to cleanse it all off himself, he can use the guard skill that will nuke his HP for him. And if he's too low, he will heal back up the HP. And then once you're at the perfect threshold where you're able to get this ailing heart special skill over here, you might want to consider using your skill 3 because your skill 3 is really damn powerful. But let, before we go there, let's talk about skill 2. Skill 2, you get the blood feast eating here. You get a bunch of bloody hand stacks over here. Skill 2 is probably going to be the main way you gain your bloody hand because skill 1 only has one instance of gaining bloody hand here. So I really need to know how much the skill 2 will give you bloody hand stacks. How fast can we actually stack up here? And then for skill 3, this is where you cash out when you are low HP. This skill has three instances of healing mentioned. On hit with the skill, you heal. And then after that, you also have, if you consume excess stacks of bloody hand, I like the, the wording here, excess stacks, which means that it will not consume a certain amount of bloody hand. So if you have a little bit 
when you pop the skill tree, you will still be able to maintain a certain amount here, hopefully enough that you can actually go back to the bloody hand number three pretty easily or stay in bloody hand number three really easily. So that will be the best situation here. Helps to keep his role as a tanky potency applier alive because of this one line here. And then he also heals HP on self based on stack consumed. He also gains coin power if you consume certain number of stacks. And if this unit consumed Y stack, he will reuse the final coin. And then after attack, he will heal X percent HP on self. And once again, he also gains bleed potency on himself. So yeah, heal here, heal here based on bloody hands, and also heal here on hit. And also heal here if you are very, very low in HP. So yeah, you are going to heal a shit down with this skill tree. And you will be just full health most likely because there's like four mentions of healing here. Legit, you will just heal to full with this skill, I think. It looks really, really powerful. A bit similar to Barber, right? Barber also use skill 1, skill 2 a lot, and after that, you use your skill 3 when you're ready to pop your blood tinge scissors blade. But for Gregor, his is excess stacks of the bloodied hand. While for Otis, it is not excess stacks, right? Otis is just consume, but you get refunded if you're able to hit a sobing target and if you kill the target also. Alright, so that is pretty much the entirety of Gregor's kit here. I feel a bit sad because this reuse final coin, right, is not the count. It's actually the potency over here, but I suppose it's to help him lean towards the fact that he's supposed to be the potency applier for bleed and rupture in the future. But we still don't know how much actual count he's going to apply. I'm hoping slash coping for really good application of bleed count over here, but more than likely, it's going to be Barber Otis levels of count application where she applies like what one bleed count one bleed count skill tree is maybe like just potency or something i don't know but for gregor i'm not expecting too big of a count that's like a dream i think we need another id and they'll probably release another two more another one more ids to support the status really really hard Particularly, I need someone that is able to... Actually, no, no, no. Uh, one thing to mention is that Fang Han Honglu... Fang Han Honglu can already bleed himself. Uh, that's because of the Makala Ego from uh, Mersault. Uh, let me try and find it here. I wonder if it's actually here yet. I think it's not here yet, but I think the library has it. Ah, yeah, yeah, here it is. Yeah, so Fang Han Honglu can actually bleed himself. That's because of this new Rose Wedge ability here. Whenever you hit someone, right? You actually bleed yourself. So this Rose Wedge means that Mersault is definitely getting some bleed related ID. I don't know who it's going to be. But this Rose Wedge is really, really good to help bleed your characters. So I'm seeing some great synergy here. And the Fang Han Honglu is definitely going to be able to bleed himself with Rose Wedge's combo. And then after that, uh, Rose Wedge plus uh, Fang Han Honglu for Rupture stuff. And then this guy here for the Potency stuff. Otis for, I don't know, Unga Bunga, I guess. And then we just need what uh, the other two Blood Fiends and then they have some sort of count application to help maintain the stacks. Or AOE count application because I did see her ultimate move do it a bunch of times. But yeah, there's a lot of different things that they could do here. And uh, I really can't wait to see all of the different synergies here. Like all the pieces of the puzzle are being spread out here. We just need to really see like the IDs and then we realize, holy shit, P-Moon cooked again. This Gregor here is just the potency piece of the puzzle uh, for all of this um, Blood Fiend teams that are going to come out and we are definitely going to see bleed plus rupture as an actual status combo in the future all right um I, did i even mention the passive i think i haven't mentioned the passive right another thing that he's also going to give to your allies is that he will nuke his own sp and then he will give the ally with the least sp um a certain amount of sp scaling off of the ailing heart if he has less ailing heart you will gain more SP for the ally. And if he has a lot, then you will gain less SP for the ally. And in this encounter, when he is to drop below a certain amount of HP, he actually will nullify the damage and then he cannot drop below. So it's basically a HP threshold, which you see on bosses usually. So this character is really, really tanky. And if you drop really low, the passive here will trigger. So yeah, it looks pretty damn nice, right? So yeah, I don't know. This, this, uh, this passive here looks really strong. Just cause I don't see a line here that says, uh, I don't see a line here that says once per encounter. It it actually is just in this encounter where this unit takes damage that brings the HP down to X, nullify that damage. Then this unit's HP cannot drop below X for the turn. If this is, if this has no cap on it when it actually releases, 
that means that I can just never die with this character, which is going to be very cool to see, you know, an, an undying priest who just full heals with every skill tree and then gets hit again and bleeds himself a lot and then he drops again and then you hit over here and then you can't die again. I don't know, if they don't put a cap on this, it will seem kind of fun. But if they put a cap on this, then it's like whatever. I guess you just nick yourself one time, and after that you you skill tree one time, and then you just kind of control yourself from that point onwards or something like that. But yeah, I think that's going to be it really. Oh, oh, wait, wait, wait. Last one, support passive. The support passive is extremely good because it's one ally with the lowest HP percentage. Heals X HP on hit. On hit. It is the Gregor support passive power creep. We have base Gregor, heal 5 HP combat start. We have G Gregor, heal 5 HP per clash. And now we have heal per hit, Don Quixote Hard Blood Art 6 Whip. Oh my goodness, that is crack cocaine. And if the target hit by the said ally had bleed, you also heal X additional HP. Whoo! Oh my god, imagine if you use like what, uh, solo uh, Red Eyes Ryoshu or solo Otis or solo any Blood Fiend, like this shit here. Mm. That is sweet, sweet sustain, dude. Like, mm, mm, mm. that is really, really good stuff over here. Right? And most likely, it's only going to require you to have, like, lust, right? Uh, let's see what Otis's support passive requires. Uh, support passive is, yeah, it's just own lust. So, yeah, like, there's so much sustain for the Blood Fiend support passives that I think solo runs with characters that don't need uh, evasions, right, are going to be pretty viable in the future. So, like you can just use your guard skill and then your guard skill doesn't even need to clash. You will be able to heal yourself because you build up a bunch of lust and then you just punch the enemy a few times or something like that. Yeah, really, really cool support passes from all of these blood fiends. Very, very sustainy. So maybe in the future, we will see some more solo runs with this kind of support passives. Just heal yourself instead of just dodging every single hit instead. All right, anyway, that's really all I have for this character here. Have to wait for the numbers to truly understand whether this character is going to be really good or maybe not so interesting. But I'm guessing it's going to be good because P-Moon... Well, they know how to cook their IDs now. Their IDs look very, very interesting nowadays compared to last time. So I'm guessing that they will not mess up the numbers and this character here will be a very, very important part of the Blood Fiend gang in the future. And his Rose, um, Rose Gregor Ego might be a little bit more uh, interesting in the future. Uh, maybe. 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 Okay, that's it. Thanks guys for watching. Leave your own comments and see you guys next time. Bye-bye.